Hello, I'm Hans Ray. Welcome to my garage, or shall I say museum. This place is packed with 40 years of bike technology. Let me take you on a ride around the world. Let's dive into some of these innovation and trends that shape mountain biking the way we know it. <laughs> All right, cockpits in mountain biking have come a long way. Handlebars and stems have changed dramatically in the way we ride the bikes. And uh, the handlebars used to be very narrow and straight, and the stems used to be very long. And I was one of the first guys to start using riser bars, and people would laugh at me, because back then, only the very cheap mountain bike models had riser bars. And the expensive bikes had these flat, straight bars that were horrible to ride with. Stems used to be 140, 150 millimeters. And I remember I asked my team manager, can somebody make me a 120 stem? And he was like basically saying, come on, dude. There's only 140s, 150s available. And now look what happened with the stems. They got shorter and shorter, or under 100 mil and even 50 mil, and now even negative stems. So uh, all that stuff has changed a lot. and. It's just another milestone in mountain biking. But let me take you now to one of my favorite riding places in Europe, the Carosello 3000 Mountain Park in Livigno. <laughs> This is Madonon, one of my favorite spots. I even got engaged right up here. And sometimes I sleep here, and if you're lucky, you find a bottle of wine inside. Salute. Suspension forks first came out in the late 80s, early 90s. People were really skeptical about them. They didn't want to use them first. I mean, we only had like 80 millimeters or 100 millimeters, and the people were not sure if they were strong enough, if they would snap off. And they weren't even sure if they needed them. A lot has happened since and suspension has come a long way and I started using them on my trial bike and in my trial show and I started hopping on the front wheel. I remember a lot of people saying, wow, if the forks are strong enough for Hans Ray to use them for his stuff, we can trust them. But anyway, it was a slow evolution and as bikes got better, the courses got more demanding and the limits were pushed to the sky. Let's do another downhill here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, Tromper Post is a typical example of how mountain bike evolution has happened. I cannot imagine a ride without one anymore. But it actually took a long time for them to catch on. I was one of the early adopters, like in 2004, Mark Weir was using it and a few other guys. But a lot of the guys thought they were too heavy, we don't need them. And then in 2006, 7, a few companies started making them. The masses didn't really realize how valuable of a component it was. Even the cross-country guys use them in the World Cup races. It's your best friend on the trail. So you think e-bikes are new? Well, think again. They actually been around for quite a while. As a matter of fact, I did my first e-bike ride in 1997 with no other than President George Bush Sr. At the time, GT had just bought a brand new startup e-bike company called Charger. And they were way ahead of it at the time. We had an opportunity to show these new bikes to the president. And him and myself, we took a little test ride in this conference room. And he immediately ordered a couple for him and his wife. And it wasn't until 10 years later that I converted one of my regular GT mountain bikes 
with a rear hub motor and the battery right here. I was saying to people, man, this is what doping must feel like. And at the time, people were laughing at me and saying, ah, oh, come on, Hans, you're getting old, you're getting fat, you don't need an e-bike. And I told them, look, they're a whole different thing, you know, try one. And then in 2016, they had the GT e with the Shimano Steps 8000. And now they have the e force with the EP8 engine. And ever since then, I really started to embrace the mountain bike. The 14 year old Hans came out of me again. And I have so much fun discovering new places and riding with people from different skill levels. Going to adventure, backcountry tours to places far away. But most of all, I love to do these technical climbs, these widow makers, stuff I could never do before on my regular bike. And I really like the challenges. But you know, don't worry, I'm not gonna give up my regular mountain bikes, but e-bikes, they are here to stay and they are fun. Happy trails, my friends. Are you eating in trail mode or boost? You're eating very fast.